around seven o'clock this morning we had a uh, earthquake here and uh, here in Oklahoma we really uh, we have a lot of earthquakes but uh, not really real powerful ones and this one actually I mean actually shook like that and uh, I was standing here I was building models and I thought man we have like uh, uh, you know construction vehicles uh, you know shaking the house but it was an actual uh, actual uh, uh, earthquake and I did one thing I had to do was uh, I had to uh, I saw the hobby knife starting to slide, so I had to push it back forward, you know, because that's a uh, that'll uh, kill your toe when it drops off the thing. But anyway, that's crazy. So I'm gonna have to go and uh, check the uh, uh, check the arc and the house and all that stuff. So we may do a video on that, see if there's any uh, earthquake damage. But anyway, uh, the Honda bow. I uh, last I left everything off, I. Uh, I took some uh, sealer. I sealed it all. That's just so I can uh, tape it. And I taped the uh, splinter pattern. I don't know if I showed it on the last one, but um, it's real close. It's not uh, exact. I don't like to do. Uh, I don't like to copy exact because you just spend all your time, you know, getting the exact. That's like if you did a chipped uh, vehicle, chip per chip. It's just uh, it's just too much. But anyway, I got the splinter pattern. I don't know if you can actually see it, but it's actually a darker green on the gray. So when it when you pull the tape up, you will see the green uh, splinter pattern. But it'll also be a uh, uh, not really faint, but uh, mute, if you will. And that way, I because it looks uh, more realistic when it's uh, muted colors instead of the uh, the. Uh, crazy uh, camo scheme which I like the crazy camo scheme but uh, when I do camo I just I like the muted colors I think it blends in makes you have to uh, get up on it to look at it to see the uh, you know how the camouflage flows so I got that on I'm going to do uh, probably one more uh, I didn't mask off anything else so I didn't have to have any uh, overspray I just put the airbrush on low setting and uh, just went to town. I'm going to probably put one more coat on here and uh, I'll be uh, good to go on that. Now, uh, the yellow has decals uh, for the uh, ship. I may, uh, I'll see how well the decals do. If not, I may paint the yellow, but probably be more decaling than uh, uh, painting. But anyway, painting is almost done on the exterior and then we have to concentrate on the inside uh, once I get the tape off and all that good stuff. But anyway, we're getting closer to uh, painting more and more on the Hanabo and then I'm gonna do some uh, post shading on it just to give it a little more a uh, little more character uh, the 190s I uh, taped off the uh, splinter pattern again I don't do uh, I don't like to I know we're doing specific planes but I don't like to uh, copy the pattern it just takes too much uh, you know, most time you're going off of a line drawing and all that, and uh, I like to have a little bit of freedom when I paint the planes, just uh, in case, you know, only absolute purists will find fault with it, but it's uh, close, and that's what we are after. But anyway, on the uh, D, I got the uh, splinter on there. I uh, did a little camo molting on the uh, back and the midsection, which I'm going to do a little bit more. That's just because I ran out of paint out of the cup because I was painting all in one whack. Uh, the A model, I uh, did the splinter. I think it's supposed to have a, more of a uh, curvy uh, camo on the wings, but I went ahead and did the splinter pattern. I think that uh, I think that looks cool that way. Again, uh, just like the, uh, it's got the little molted camo on the uh, side and the uh, wing there. And uh, once I uh, probably put a little bit more on there, I uh, kind of went a little light on a few spots. Uh, I'll probably put a little bit more, and then uh, I'll again I'll seal it with some uh, uh, crystal clear there and then uh, mask everything off and then start doing the yellow on the A. So hopefully I'll get a little more done on that in the next day. Uh, up next for the build for others. I notice everyone's probably wondering why there's a big orange car on the workbench, but this is a RC Cuda. Uh, it's just a uh, body. I don't have the uh, chassis that's got the wheels and all that, uh, but uh, I was asked to make this a battle CUDA and I basically got three pictures and it shows it with uh, guns mounted on the side here and it's got some armor plating uh, some lights and uh, just a black paint job and a couple other little things but anyway it's going to look like this but I'm going to have to change it just a tad just because uh, to simplify it and that this RC car is actually going to be 
I want to say movable, it's going to be drivable, and it's going to take abuse. So I'm going to, I can't put a whole lot of detail on it. I, I can, but I can't, but I got to make it where it's uh, durable for, uh, you know, just in case that, you know, it flips when it's uh, driving or it launches, you know, and everything, uh, you know, is staying in place. So I'm not going to glue any of the armor plating on. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I will drill some holes and I'm going to actually put some rivets on here and that'll hold it in place. So I'll show that once we get there. But uh, first things that we noticed on the uh, car itself, it's got a screen mesh. So I took some uh, mesh that you can get at the hardware store for your screen door. I uh, roughly cut it out and since it's a battle CUDA, you don't have to totally be 100% uh, exact, so that's a good, so I got that cut there. I uh, changed up the armor plating just a little bit, uh, just to make it uh, easier. I'm actually going to uh, uh, rivet in uh, two spots uh, on each side and that'll hold it. And then of course, once you get the paint on there, it'll uh, blend in everything. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, I'm going to do armor plating on the uh, top here and on the back, which I've already got the templates cut out. And we're going to do the sides. And I'm going to I'm going to change just a little bit on the sides here, just to uh, keep everything uh, uh, simple. And uh, so if anything falls off, it uh, you know it shouldn't with the rivets, and it won't be no glue and anything else. The guns here. I actually got two guns uh, to fit on each side, but I was, uh, I'm doing a lot of planning here. Uh, it's going to be just mounted like that. So I'm going to actually drill a hole through here, and I'm going to actually get a like a uh, self-tapping screw, and I'll screw it from underneath and uh, screw it onto the gun here, and it should hold it on. Um, we'll have to figure out if we're going to have the ammo belt and the uh, uh, ammo uh, backpack thing here. Uh, if we do, it'll be somewhere like that. So uh, let me know if you want that on, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get that on if, if necessary. But anyway, we'll uh, we'll figure it out. We're not there yet. We're gonna do the armor plating first, and then uh, probably uh, uh, get most of that on, then get the paint, and then do some masking and all that. But anyway, we'll get to it. So that's where I stand on the battle Cuda, the uh, Kettenkrad. So what I've done so far is I shot everything with the uh, Vallejo uh, tubing fluid, which I am sold on this. I would get this or uh, uh, what's the name? MIGs, ammo MIGs, not MIG, and uh, AK Interactives. Their tubing fluid. I'd give any one of those a try because I'm a big fan. All you do is shake that up, uh, put it in your airbrush, spray it. Uh, once that dries, take your uh, whatever paint you want, spray on top of that, get you a stiff brush. Let's see if I can do it right here. Dip it in water, and you basically uh, uh, activate it, like right there, if you see where it's chipping. And uh, it takes it away. Uh, it's a just fantastic stuff. I am sold on it. So uh, I probably if I have to do any heavy chipping on stuff, I am using that for sure. But anyway, I went in and uh, painted uh, one whole side white, and I did the other side as well. And I started just going uh, chipping places. Uh, this is just the first pass, and then uh, after I get it chipped, I'm going to go back over with a little more white just to blend in a little bit, just to uh, do a little. Uh, highlights and everything just to uh, blend it all together, but I still got to do some more chipping around the uh, You can see where I got around the wheels and everything where it naturally should be Chipping of course then we're gonna you know paint the track paint the wheels put some more dirt on it and everything We're gonna keep it clean, but we're gonna keep it a little more used uh, Look is what we are uh, planning on plus got a little more to go on here, but slowly, but surely I am uh, getting it on the uh, Ketten Crad. Just a great stuff. But anyway, uh, that's a quick version of what I have got going on today. I'm going to try my darndest to uh, finish the Viper. I'm actually going to put it on the stand hopefully today if uh, everything goes according to plan and then I got to ship out the Van Diver car. But anyway, that's what I've got going on there. We are uh, chipping and 
making a snow version of the cut and crad we are starting the battle cuda and we are painting the 190s and the hanabo so that's what i got going on today so stay tuned for the next exciting episode 